Good morning. Welcome to Springdale Free Will Baptist Church. This is the last Sunday of November, and we're here to give God thanks. I would like you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Chronicles chapter number 16, and I'm going to start reading with verse 29 and read through verse 34. 1 Chronicles 16, verses 29 through 34. Verse 34 will be my text verse for this morning. Follow along as I read out of the scriptures. Give thanks unto the Lord, the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. And let men say among the nations, The Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of the Lord Jesus, our Savior. We just want to thank you, dear Lord, for the blessings you have given to us. And ask, Lord, not only would you give us blessings every day, but also, Lord, that you would bless every way of our life where we're walking in a godly way. So as we praise you this morning, we ask you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. As we looked here at the scriptures, it's talking about giving God thanks, being thankful unto him. And I want to start by saying, there are many things I am thanking God for. Number one, I'm thanking for God's goodness to me. It amazes me how easily people forget God's blessings. So often he blesses them when they cry out to him, but they don't have time for him thereafter. I've prayed with people for a good job, but once they get the blessing, it seems that their work gets their time and their commitment, but not God. I've prayed with people for healing, but once their health is restored, they go after worldly pursuits with no time for the Lord. It's sad, but it's often true. I've prayed with people who said that they wanted to rededicate their lives to the Lord. But then they don't come back to God's house at all. Another way we forget God's goodness is that in spite of all his blessings, we look at others' blessings and begin to grumble at what we think we lack in comparison. For many years, God was Israel's king. He provided for the nation. However, in 1 Samuel chapter 8, Israel unashamed, unashamedly asks for a human king of their own just to keep pace with the nations around them. I would say that Israel was asking for trouble, and boy, didn't they get it. Soon they forgot God's goodness. Compare also how Solomon responded with much humility to God's promise for success offered to him in 2 Chronicles 1, asking only for wisdom and knowledge to lead the people of Israel. In 1 Kings 11, however, we sadly see that in later years, Solomon's heart turned to other gods. We see that he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He forgot God's goodness. If that can happen to the wisest man on earth, surely it can happen to you and me. Dottie Rambo wrote a beautiful song. In fact, I'll read the words of the chorus of this song, where she wrote, Draw back the curtains of memory now and then. 
Show me where you brought me from and where I might have been. Remember I'm human and humans forget. So remind me, remind me, O Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, God reminds his people of how he had looked after, after them in the wilderness. He reminds them of the manna that he fed them with and how their shoes and clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell up. God then paints a beautiful picture of all the blessings and wealth that awaited them in the promised land. However, when he warns them not to forget his goodness, once they begin to enjoy those same blessings, he also told them that they need to remember and warned them not to forget, which is the same thing Jesus told the church in Ephesus. So point number one, I'm thankful for God's goodness to me. And number two, I'm thankful for God's goodness toward others and their goodness toward me. People have given me and my family food or clothing. He has impressed upon some people to give us money to pay our bills. He's given us a place to stay. And others, he's led to pray for me and my family in time of sickness or trouble. I remember back in the 1970s, Dr. Boma gave me a car when I worked at Daubert Chemical Company. Years later, I gave a different car to a missionary. I was sort of passing things along. When we lived in Dothan, Alabama, while I was going to Bethany Theological Seminary, Henry Johnson gave me a house to live in. Some years later, I gave a different car to a missionary. And later, Grady Pittman in Bucatana loaned us a house to live in. In 1 Samuel 23, verses 1 through 12, David saved the people of Keilah from the horrors of being captured by the Philistines. In response, the gratitude they showed David was that they were ready to hand him and his followers over to King Saul. Jo Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's cupbearer's dream in Genesis 40, but the man showed ingratitude by forgetting Joseph for a few years. So let's be thankful for God's goodness to us and let us be thankful for the goodness others have shown to us. Number three, I'm thankful for my family's goodness to me. How often do we take our spouse, our children, our parents and other families for granted? We forget what they have been to us through their love, faithfulness, and commitment. It is often said that the home is a place where we are loved the most and where we sometimes get hurt the most. Being thankful and being appreciative is one of the ways we can stifle Satan's strategies to invade our lives. In my ministry, I've seen relationships between family members crippled for a lifetime over a plot of land or an inheritance that seemed to favor one member or another over family finances and bank accounts or over ingratitude, drunkenness and drug use. Some people harbor grudges for years because they were not invited for a family function or they were left out of someone's will. Do you know, too, that the Bible has stories of dysfunctional situations in families? Jacob ran away for 20 years after stealing Esau's blessings. The prodigal son's brother was angry at his brother's return. David's rebellious son, Absalom, attempted to usurp the throne and force himself on David's concubines 
on David's rooftop. Abraham lied about his wife Sarah, not once, but twice, just to save his own skin. It's not exactly heroic and honorable. I wonder how our wives would react if we did the same thing to them. And of course, Peter denied the Lord, not once, not twice, but three times, just as Jesus had predicted. For a more current example, Andrew Carnegie left $1 million to one of his relatives. Yet this same relative cursed Carnegie thoroughly because he dared to leave $365 million to public charities and had only given this first relative a million dollars. Let's learn to thank and appreciate our family members. Husbands, do you remember the girl you took to the altar? The one who bore your children, who has stood by your side faithfully? Remember to be thank thankful. Wives, remember the man you fell in love with and swooned over. Be thankful for what he has been to you. And a little gray hair or extra weight need not bring negativity to your feelings. Children, be thankful for the mother who bore you inside of her, for the father who has sacrificed so much for you. Parents, be thankful for the children God has blessed you with. Remember the joy they brought to you in the growing up years. They're not perfect, and neither are we. But they are a blessing from God. Widows and widowers, remember your deceased spouse with pleasant memories and a thankful heart. Think of the joy of meeting them in heaven someday. Psalm 104 says, that we are to enter into his praise gates with thanksgiving. I'll start that over again. That we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his uh, courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So let me recap the first three points of my message. Let's be thankful for God's goodness to us. Let's be thankful for the goodness others have shown to us. And let's be thankful for the goodness of our family toward us. In my last point, I have, I'm thankful for the salvation that Christ freely gives to us. I love the gospel story. I love to sing the praises of my Savior. Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. I remember many years ago, I learned this song, and part of the song in the chorus says, he paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt I could not pay. Christ Jesus paid my debt so that I could live with him forever. Won't you make this a week of being thankful to God, to others, to your family members, and make this a week of salvation and thankfulness to what the Lord has done so that we could live with him forever. And most of all, be thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ who loves you more than you will ever know. I sang a special song a little while ago. It's titled, Thank You, Lord, the same title as my message. The song goes for making the sun to shine, putting the stars in the sky, for the flowers that bloom, the ocean so blue, thank you, Lord. For every sparrow that sings and makes sweet melody. 
for the rivers that flow, the rain and the snow. Thank you, Lord. For my whole family, for the joys you've given to me, for the shoes on our feet, plenty to eat. Thank you, Lord. For the church where I worship and pray, for the freedoms I have today. For your spirit, I feel your presence so real. Thank you, Lord. For being a friend so dear and giving my sad heart cheer. For holding my hand when I could not stand. Thank you, Lord. For giving your life for me on a cross at Calvary. For taking my place, your mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord. The chorus goes, I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. For everything you've done for me, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. For making me whole, saving my soul. Thank you, Lord. As we bow in a word of prayer, again I would tell you, Lord, thank you for the so many blessings of life, for the Old Testament prophecies and New Testament prophecies that tell of your coming and of your sacrifice at Calvary. Thank you for the prophecies that tell us where you would be born and when you would die on the cross, approximately, that tell us of the torture and pain and the misery that you would suffer, the scriptures who would tell us that you would be despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, or the scriptures that tell us that one day you would overcome the Antichrist, in victory and in power. For the scriptures that would tell us of the blessings of the millennial kingdom after you have defeated the Antichrist and his kingdom. For the scriptures that promise us the blessings of eternity and tell us not to worry because you defeated the devil and his Antichrist even at Calvary and during the resurrection. For the scriptures that promise us eternal life if we would just turn to you in faith and follow your teachings and your leading. For this I am thankful for. And for your blessings of life I am thankful for. For our Heavenly Father and the gifts of salvation I am thankful for. For the promise, Lord Jesus, that you would die on Calvary, that you would resurrect a few days later, and that you would eventually come in power and glory with the armies of heaven. For this I am thankful for. And Holy Spirit, for coming according to the promise of Jesus Christ, to give us a heavenly comforter that would turn our hearts toward the Lord Jesus. For this I am thankful for. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.